ব্রজরাহালীকৃষ্ণশনিতখং রামকৃষ্ণদিব্যসূত মায়াতীতেশকোটি অনন্তভাবসংযুক্ত অপূর্বজ্ঞানসাগর রামকৃষ্ণমনাথ সন্তীদায়কসন্নিধি ব্রহ্মানন্দসরোবরে ক্রীড়ন্তংসক রামকৃষ্ণকৃপাপাত্র তন্নামৃতদায়ক হৃদয়রঞ্জন বন্দে মহারাজো রাজেশ্বর শ্রীরামকৃষ্ণপর্ষদ বন্দে শ্রীব্রহ্মানন্দস্বামী ওম শান্তি 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 ওই স্যালুট শ্রী ব্রহ্মানন্দ স্বামী দি ইনার মোস্ট সার্কেল মঙ্ক অফ রাম শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণ ইজ দ্য ডিলাইট অফ দ্য হার্ট ইজ দ্য কিং অফ কিংস ইজ দি গিভার অফ ব্লেসিংস অ্যান্ড ইমর্টালিটি plays he plays in the lake like a white swan in the ocean of brahmananda the ocean of bliss i salute ramakrishna nath who brings peace to all he is embodiment of infinite spiritual attitudes the ocean of infinite knowledge is child the divine child of ramakrishna who is beyond all maya and the nishwar koti is the eternal playmate of sri krishna the covered boy of vrindavan we salute him again and again so we are happy to see you all again and today we'll be thinking about some brahmananda this topic as has been already announced it is brahmananda his karma ideal the sami vivekananda brought a beautiful idea it is not his idea it is sri ramakrishna it is the eternal idea of salvation and it is very pertinent for us to think how we can realize the truth while in action look at our life normal life our normal life is more of action from the morning till night we work 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 but what is the how to work what is the ideal what is the goal of this work most of our work as we do see how we are suffering how we bring our own pain and agonies due to my actions and every action there is a friction there is a frustration expectation is not reached so we are having so much trouble with the work but what work ideal has been given by sami vivekananda and how sri ramakrishna's this ideal of serving god in man has been fulfilled in the meaning and message of sami brahmananda and his teachings so we like to think about these points just we have heard that beautiful statement the ideal of karma yoga in one nutshell that has been mentioned now that this reading what we just heard that in it is easy for to do great deeds anyone any fool can do a great deed uh, when has there is a huge praise and adoration and clapping of the hand no anyone can give their life Uh, to get some praise name but the deeds that bring name and fame 
people are adept, it can be done. But Brahmananda Swami says, just you heard that, it is by his small everyday action that a man's character is known. How one performs a very small, tiny work, how one keeps his room clean, how one keeps his dress in the hanger perfectly uh, ironed, no? Everything, whatever it is, it is everything is service to God, everything is puja, worship. So that is the ideal for small things, what the question of big things. But it is by his small and everyday actions that a man's character is known. So did, how a person is, is known by, uh, we know that our different stories are there. Hmm? How, how skillful is one person. So one Swami came and he was Swami Shraddhananda and he yeah, is very friendly to our many of our devotees. And So one devotee said, Swami, please come to our home. Then he said, no, jokingly, he said, you will not be able to clean things properly. And uh, what is the use of going to your home? No, no, you, if you come and find one, some defect, you can tell me. And yeah, he cleaned really, she cleaned everything right and left everywhere. And he said, now I see if you can find anywhere any defect. And then the first thing he came and opened <laughs> cupboard and just it opened and all the dump and dirt has been put up there as he put under the rug you know so this is the point karma yoga is not that karma yoga is just puja offering a flower at the feet of the lord as we do with all care and attention so it is every work is worship so that is the ideal. So true karma yogi does not work to gain publicity, no matter how insignificant his work may be. He throws himself wholeheartedly into the task because for him his work has been become worship. This is a great, great, great ideal. And Swami Brahmananda emphasizing that, that, that we do, everyone does work. Because there is some motivation. What is the motivation? I shall be praised. I shall be recognized. I will have name. I will earn money. I will do something. Is it bad to, to expect those things? No, expectation is not bad if it does not kill us. After doing karma, then we fail. Then we cry and weep. So what is the use of that karma which ultimately brings this type of frustration and desperation? Therefore, the th to how one can throw wholeheartedly into the work. When he is doing as if nothing is there, work is the only thing he is doing, performing the work most perfectly in maximum ability what one is having. And how that time we forget God. And then at the end, no expectation, just offer it to God. So that is the ideal. That's why he wholeheartedly into task because this work is not work, but it is worship to God. As Swami Vivekananda gave this ideal very aptly, we all know that, no? Normally we, what we do when we start our spiritual life, we do this. The work and worship. That's why normal complaint is that I am so busy with my job, with my other duties, I don't find any time for meditation and prayer. Because prayer is something different in getting in the morning and getting into the shrine and doing some chant and prayer, meditation, that is spiritual. And rest of the day what we are doing it is non-spiritual, it is work. And I am doing for my boss. Boss is not happy with me. My co-worker is not cooperating with me. And I am getting frustrated. I do so much, but I am not recognized. So see, these are the things coming because work is separated from worship. Work is work. It is a friction. But worship is peaceful. So secular and spiritual. 
Shambhi Vivekananda also gave that the meat, east and west. No? This is the idea. He said this two segment. The West is very efficient in performing things meticulously, powerfully. You go, go to India, people that are very much in meditation and prayer and chanting and this. Huh? In a practical matters, of course not now, present India, but when Swami Brahmananda was there, it was much more uh, th- that way. The practicality is their lack of practicality, lack of uh, what you call technology and other things, they are so backward. But Swami Vivekananda saw that infinite potentiality of India, the spiritual India, and the great work skill, perfection, and all these things in action in the West. That's why he said East and West should blend, the best of East and best of West. That's why Swami Vivekananda said, as Buddha has a message for the East, I have a message for the West, no? Of course, that is the major mass message will be differently, we can say. But this is also another way of looking at that. Major, major idea is that, yes, the, to explore the inner potential which is there along with the material development, that should be the blending. And a new culture will come, world culture, which will be leading to perfection to everyone. But here we are talking about this ideal of karma, that karma is secular. That is our conception. And when we go to the shrine room, we do incense and wave some incense and candle and put some flowers and this and chants and this. This is spiritual. But this is the beginner stage. And Swami Vivekananda suggested that it is, it is we have to transform this karma, not karma. It is as if I am performing worship of God through my karma. I'll, I will not be able to do it at the beginning. But that should be. That that is the purpose. That as if I am doing whatever I am doing, I am doing for God. As if I am not offering a flower. Suppose you are in your computer. With a computer you are working something. Huh? That computer work is as if offering some flower. You are collecting flowers, making sandal paste, huh? collecting all the um, puja articles and things. Similarly, in your office with a computer, with your, or your school, or your medical professional, or in whatever field of life. So all these are tools through which we are worshipping God as it were. At the beginning, I will not be able to think that I am doing, but as it were. And the third stage will come. It is not as it were. It is. Whatever I did, I worship God and God only. So this is the final development of our karma yoga ideal, what Swami Vivekananda praised. And that's why he emphasized it so much. He said that spiritual ideal is this. And by people used to know in the past, but by meditation and by philosophy and by spiritual idea practice, one will realize God. But by serving, by working, by doing work for God, they will realize the highest illumination. So this is the point that Swami Brahmananda understood this philosophy and he in in, in implied into the Ramakrishna tradition and among the monastics and others. Therefore we find that he is talking to Babu Ram Maharaj Swami Premananda when Brahmacharis are heavily worked hard eh? because in early days monastery was very poor so everything is to be done by them from A to Z. So, so Swami Premananda says Babu Ram Da, brother Babu Ram Reduce the work. If they don't get the taste of love for God, then how can they work? And if they, that uh, if that bliss is not received, then the karma will be a cause of bondage only. So karma will be bondage as we are doing. We know we are doing karma and we are in bondage. But karma can be a source of freedom if it is balanced by meditation and prayer. So we find that it is repeatedly 
This idea is given by Swami Brahmananda Ji and it is a just to fulfill the mission for which the incarnation Ramakrishna came. Ramakrishna came for, it is, it is, Swami Brahmananda says, Sri Ramakrishna is the avatar of this age and he is helping every sincere and earnest aspirant. He is waiting for you and you make a little effort, spread, spread the cell of your devotion and the spiritual breeze that is forever blowing will carry you to the goal. Make your life blessed by the vision of the Lord. So he is saying, karma is not bad, but the way how we do it, how we bring the spirit that it is a service to God, as it were, or it is service, how can we do that? It will not come by intellectual discussion and talking. It is to be applied in life. How it is to be applied is that balanced by meditation and prayer. That's why Swami Brahmananda Maharaj always emphasize pay attention to spiritual practice. At the same time, bring that spirituality in your action. And when again in, the, in between the action, again bring the spiritual ideal. Pause a moment, do something, think that you are doing for God and then again move on so that the whole work becomes a service to God or an offering to God. So, so and Sri Ramakrishna has come not for anyone, one person, as Brahmananda Maharaj said. It's for you, specifically, as if he's indicating it is you means me. And how I can take this message and apply in my life to make it a purposeful living to unfold the divinity in us. We find Sri Ramakrishna, Swami, uh, Prabhupada writes in one place that Swami Vivekananda wished his brothers to combine the contemplative life with the life of service to mankind. But Brahmananda was the first to recognize the depth and scope of this Swami's ideal and he gave them his full support. So what Swami Vivekananda wished it is the purpose of Ramakrishna, Vivekananda, Brahmananda, all this, this Ramakrishna order is one, one goal. What? God realization. Or knowing who we are in whatever language we talk about. And that's why Swamiji wanted that his brothers to combine in their own life, to combine contemplative. We know it is a departure. In India, it is a great departure from the spiritual tra tradition of the monasticism. Monastic side, where there they will give up their home, they, they live in, leave everything and go to Himalayas or in deep forest, and there they will be sitting there, contemplating on God, bake their meal, read the Sankara commentary, the philosophical part of it, day and night, meditate, pray and analyze. That is the life. This is the first time. Even Buddhism was there. That, that this emphasis was not there. Collective living and you are doing what you are meditating in your own small morning time, but what you are doing, that is also a spirituality. Serving God, there is nothing but God. Everything is permeated with Brahman. All is Atman and Brahman. God resides in the heart of all. If this is a philosophy, then giving up God, why are you, are you going to meditate? But at the same time, if we don't meditate, then we come into the world, we don't see God anywhere. We see the person. And then we feel that I did so much for you and you didn't do anything for me. Our reaction comes, our, all the negativities bother us very much. So, here is the point, that combination of the contemplative life. That's why Ramakrishna was steeped in contemplation and God realization, nothing, nothing more. But he started the activity. He running to the devotees to give this message, give this message and show the life. We are talking about Samadhi. We have never seen one person in Samadhi. 
Ramakrishna is going there and going into Samadhi. Showing an exact example what can be achieved in human life. What is the goal of human life? Not in words, not in writing 20 books or making a, a web page and publishing those things. But it is only he is going there, living his life, demonstrating. That is the goal. See, this can be achieved. And that's why this ideal was given to Vivekananda and he said, you are the leader. In my absence, you keep all these, uh, my children together and start this activity. No? And actually what Vivekananda did, after Ramakrishna was passing away, see the monastery, what is going through? Tremendous spiritual discipline. Tremendous spiritual activity. And they, that and that to be absorbed in the bliss of God in the deep main contemplation, no? That was okay. But when Vivekananda went back and enforced them, come out of that and now serve the hungry, the poor, the needy, the uneducated, wherever there is need, go and serve God, serve God in them. It was a great departure and it was also very difficult for the brother monks to accept this idea also. But gradually that has been accepted by them and then they become the, the source of inspiration and what whole of India, you know, this ideal is penetrated into all the monastic communities now. First when it was started, then at that time it was criticized because monks are giving up their spiritual practice and study of the Vedanta, Shankara commentary, Ramanuja commentary, Madhya commentary, or the fine discrimination between the Ajata Bada and this Bada, that Bada. And they are engaged in serving homeless person, serving a ill patient, sick patient in the Himalayan range, going from Kankhal to Rishikesh to Turkasi and preparing their meals and then cleaning their soiled cloth and what type of monk is this? That is bringing the karma ideal. The, what is the ideal? It is not karma, it is not karma. But it is for self-realization and seeing God and purifying oneself by that service. And mind being purified, then seeing God will be more tangible, palpable. So, that's why with a life of service in mankind, that is the greatest contribution of Sri Ramakrishna's in practical life. It, philosophy was there. In, 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 in Bible it is there. Na? That you, when I am hungry, you fed me. When I, I was uh, naked, you gave me cloth. You gave me me cloth. This philosophy is there. Not applied. Applied philosophy is this where Vivekananda, Ramakrishna and Brahmananda insisted. But again, our tendency is that when we go to do work, we sometimes get totally in, involved into the work, forgetting the purpose of our work. So that's why he is blending the, with the life service of mankind. Brahmananda understood that contemplative life with the life of service to mankind. Very important point. Contemplative life um, is bridged with the life of service to mankind. Anything we do, it is a service. And where is any service to done to whom? We are all troubled by this. We serve our own family, our friends, our relatives. And every time we get a blow and we get a bitter experience because of our expectation. Ideal karma yoga, it is you are not doing for anything, you are doing for God only. So how that can be implied? So when they stepped into meditation and deep contemplation, even after that, Swami Brahmananda himself is so much absorbed in the devotion, he has asked, what are you doing? He said that, yes, I am doing it for, to get established in this state of samadhi. So that, it will be Sahaja Samadhi. His words are very beautiful. He said, Sahaja Samadhi. Sahaja Samadhi means, as you breathe in and out, the Samadhi will be like that. You will be walking in Samadhi state. 
and and actually he was like that he was living in that realm of very high level of spiritual consciousness and inspiring everyone to do the work perfectly at the same time not work taking to the level of worship so that's why the third state of worship what is called work is worship that is the goal work is worship no less offering a flower in the temple or meditating contemplating or studying philosophy is no less than just giving a glass of water to a thirsty person to give a meal to the ho- homeless person or is not homeless homeless will not come into the from our perspective we will be homeless we will be singing thirsty and hungry but the man of god it will be transformed it is all god in different costumes so that is the spiritual ideal of the karma we see i'll read something from the eternal companion ha huh. he see himself becoming an example that he does not do anything without the will of god that means he is guided by we guide we are guided by our ego that's why our karma becomes so much problematic and when one can be guided by god then karma will be all joy because it is no ego personality is not drive driven by the small tiny puny ego my joy my suffering my pain my gain my my loss my fame my name all me and mine that is to be abolished so brahm swami ji used to leave brahmananda maharaj used to leave in that level of consciousness all the time so he says in one place <clears throat> for the good of all for the happiness of all swami ji wish this path to follow when swami ji returned to india he talked to his brother disciples giving a new expression to the ideals for which sri ramakrishna had stood it is not enough he said to devote your entire life to the realization of god for yourself alone you must also live for the good of, for, of all for the happiness of all and this was understood by brahmananda and he involved other monks into this line some visitors visited uh, the belur mot and were very impressed by the mission success in social service the monk of the order however he thinks that it is not a second it is of secondary importance the success in material plane maharaj always insisted this the one purpose of life is to know god plunge deep into the sea of bliss and become immortals at in knowledge and devotion then serve god in mankind work is not the end of life this interested work is means of attaining devotion meditate meditate and dive deep know that god alone is real keep at least three fourths of your mind in god it is enough if you give one fourth to service work and worship so work and worship work and worship means with the spiritual ideal gradually gradually it will bring this meditative mood in the work itself and then one will not find any difference between meditation and work uh that's why he used to emphasize more this ideal as as i said i will may talk so much but to bring this feeling this emotion this understanding in our day to day work it needs deep contemplative life behind a prayerful life a life of purity a life of sincerity that's why spiritual practice should go hand in hand with this karma ideal karma is that called that's why it's called adikando adikando means the very 
beginning. In the Kathu Upanishad, in the, in the, in the Isha Upanishad says, na, Gita says, Na karma naam anaram hat naishkarmam purushasnute. Naishkarma means the state of inaction. State of inaction where you have transcended all karma, like a man in samadhi, naishkarma. You cannot attain there just by saying so. Karma, you have to start karma wherever we are. We may be in a level, I am a, not that developed, I do karma in the morning, I do meditate and then do Lord's karma. Forget whole day maybe. But when you remember, think that, oh, I did it for you. So that may be the starting point. Karma, without beginning the karma, one cannot reach the state of where there is no karma. Akarma, that's called nice karma or akarma. This is a technical term. Nice karma means no karma, beyond karma. Akarma, no karma. So that state, that state is the goal of life that cannot be achieved without starting from with the karma. Eh? The Isha Upanishad said, they suppose you live for hundred years. Isha, Vashyam, Idagyam Sarvam, Yatkincha Jagatyam Jagata, Tena Tyaktena Bhunjita, Mavidha Kasya Shiddhanam, Kurvan Neveha Karma Ani, Jiji Vishet, Shatagyam Shamaha, Evang Tainanna Teyasti, Na karma lippate nare. Karma will not lippate, nor will stain you. Karma will not stain you. If you live for hundred years, do karma. Do karma as, as per injunction of the scriptures. And with that performance of the karma, you will reach that state of a karma. So, karma should be performed. Only karma is not done by two two type, two type people. We, we, uh, Swami Brahmananda says in another place that who cannot do, who, who does not do karma? One is who is an idiot, <laughs> so lazy, so, uh, so many help, helpless to uh, selfish. So he can be that one person and another person who is in samadhi. So in between, everyone will have to do the karma. So that's why it is very important that we, how to perform that. Uh, they say, my boy, devote yourself to spiritual practice, Brahmananda says. Attain knowledge and devotion. Then we'll see how your heart will overflow with love and sympathy for mankind. People say, I want to do good to the world. We cannot do good to the world unless we actually dive deep into our heart with this philosophy, with this ideal, the meditating on God. And then that idea will overflow. Says Brahmananda Maharaj's own word. That my boy, devote yourself to spiritual practices. A guru gives us mantra. We can chant the Gita, Bhagavata, Upanishad or any scriptural text and to tune our mind in that level. And then... With it, there will come the karma, and that karma with the proper attitude will bring the success. Then you will see how your heart will overflow with love and sympathy for mankind. You, need, you cannot rest without helping others, as there are people who cannot rest without doing harm to others. That's the sanskar. They built up their character that way. So we have to build up our character in this way. That way, you cannot stop. You cannot sleep all night without thinking of others suffering and praying for them, doing something for them. They, so that should be the ideal Swamiji, Swami Brahmananda gives. Ah, uh, Swamiji gave his heart's blood to build this monastery. He's talking to the young monks. 
the Swamiji gave Swami Vivekananda, gave his heart's blood to build this monastery so that you young men might have the opportunity to devote your lives to God and practice spiritual discipline. In fact, in his effort to make your life easier, he overexerted himself and shortened his own life. What intense love he had towards all men. And what are you doing? Hold fast to the lotus feet of the Lord. Remember him constantly and do not waste any more time in worldly thoughts. Struggle, struggle, hard to control the outgoing mind and fix it on God. When you can do this, you will realize what joy there is in spiritual life, what fun it is. Ignorance must be overcome in this very life. This will not be easy unless you can devote yourself wholeheartedly to the work of the Spirit. Faith is the one thing needed. Intense faith. Let not doubts come, hold, get hold of you and your mind. So he is saying that we have to struggle hard. It's a practice side, not merely intellectual talk or intellectual understanding will do. There is a need of our spiritual practice and also karma practice, practice of karma in the proper spirit. So his emphasis is people, we do work, everyone does work, but how to do this work is giving the practical suggestion for all of us to blend our life so that we can easily understand the, realize the highest truth in our life. There is a beautiful idea again given, the same repeated idea. Work and worship must go hand in hand. It is a very good thing if one can devote oneself entirely to spiritual practices. But how many can do that? There are two types of men who can sit still without work, as I just mentioned. One is the idiot who is too dull to be active, and the other is the saint who has gone beyond all activity. The Gita says also, freedom from activity is never achieved by abstaining from actions. So what he says, work and worship that we should have to start, where we are now, in realistic life, uh, that it should go hand in hand, and to devote, one can devote oneself entirely to spiritual practice, we cannot do that. Suppose, given uh, that we say that too much work, too much work. If suppose someone gives me the opportunity to, okay, you are withdrawn from work. There is a story that once of our brother monk, uh, our senior. So he complained to, to our Belur Mart Swamis and said, I am too much work. I cannot do any more work. I want to leave. I want, I want to spend my time for meditation and spiritual practice. Then this Swami said, okay, from tomorrow you will not have to do anything. So we'll, you will get a room in the monastery and even you need not have to come for food. Food will be sent to your room. You remain there 24 hours and do as much meditation you want to do. Day and night, 24 hours, we will never ask you, to, never call you back. <laughs> so he was excited. <laughs> And he said, good, <laughs> I'll be utilizing my time the best way. And then what happened? As you, as you understand, so the first day was good, excitement, no? Meditation, prayer, japa, this, that, going on. But 24 hours, you have to build up your muscle, spiritual muscle. You cannot do in one day. It takes lifelong practice, no? To meditation, starting from half an hour to 30 minutes to 40 minutes, 40 minutes to one hour, one hour, no? As gym, you go to the gym and you do uh, weightlifting. Do you go and start 500 pounds at a time from the very beginning? Then you'll break your arm. So after a few days, three, four days, then he came and fell at the feet of the Swami. So no, 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 it is not for me. It is too much trouble for me. So, so that's the balance is necessary. 
What is the point? How many people, how much, how many of us are capable of thinking of God 24 hours given the opportunity? It will be mind will be it will be, people run mad. They cannot and and in Hima, we we make jokes. Uh, people go uh, from Belun Wat, suppose they want to see that Uttar Kasi. It's a very interesting place. No, we are monks. We should go to the Himalayas and do meditation practice. That's a very charm is there, attraction is there. So when one goes there, few days are okay. And then they see the other sadhus, what they are doing. They get four, cha- four chapati handmade tequilas. No? So in one place they get four pieces. But four pieces is what? You have to make breakfast, lunch, supper and uh, four times. Can you suffer, su- I mean, survive with that? So they find out where is another place where we can get little food. But you go to find another place, it goes one mile down, two miles down. So going and coming, your uh, hunger will be increased more. So, so this is a question of survival is a question. Uh, so you go from one place to other place and then how can you eat the, this dry handmade chapatis, no? With little uh, lentil. So uh, some chili is good, no? How to get chili? Then you collect some uh, seeds, some chili seeds and then uh, spread. And so that chili plant may come out, no? So you have to water that, bring water from the Ganga. So like that things go on. That means you do for your own purpose. But when it's done for the good of all, why not do that and balance your spiritual life? That is the ideal given by Swami Brahmananda, who insisted the principles of Swami Vivekananda in this Ramakrishna order. And that is the, that is the advice for all the devotees also. How? Because we have to work. We cannot stop working, but this idea should be there. That's why... Right. That is, uh, I, uh, work therefore is a means to reach the stage of meditation. Uh, he's saying work should be leading us to meditation. No, if really we are sincere, whole day we are working, and in between we are praying to God, oh, oh, I am doing for you, doing for you. At the end of the day, my mind will be just pushing me. We'll have to go to. Meditate. We will have to go to meditate to deep, deepen that spiritual life and get greater joy. So one will lead to the other. Good meditation in the morning will lead us to do work with proper spirit. And proper spirit, if we try to do work in the proper spirit, it will help my mind to move towards the inner life for more for spiritual practice and inspiration to get greater joy and dive deep into the self. So even those who give up work and lead an ascetic life have to devote some time to the necessary requirements of life. Therefore, learn to work for the Lord instead of working for yourself. That's why you know, very simple thing. Christ said, no, my... uh, what is that? My Lord is uh, easier than uh, my cross. Huh? My Lord uh, is uh, is my yoke. My yoke, right? Good. It's light and easy to bear. Yeah, my yoke is much lighter than the yoke you are. That means with our e- we are carrying our own yoke, one load. I, 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 I. I did it, I, I worked it, I, I produced this, I did this, my copyright, my writing, my, I, me, mine. It should be thee, thy, thine. So that is the point. So learn to work the, for the Lord instead of working for yourself. Know that you are worshipping the Lord through your work. If you can work with this attitude, work will never bind you. You, on the contrary, it will improve you in every way, physically, mentally, intellectually, morally, and spiritually. Offer yourself, your body and soul, to the Lord. Give yourself entirely to Him. Say to Him, O Lord, I give myself, my body and soul, to You. Do with me what You will. I am your servant, ready to serve you to the best of my ability. So this is the ideal which we can practice to make our life joyful, no? See, the point is that you, work will not bind. 
if I do it for God, actually what becomes very easy, there is a beautiful song, I, uh, Oh Lord, whatever load I have carried on me, eh, it has become all burden. But whatever you have given is all that easy. It is the example. Actually we carry our burden on ourselves. Work, we do work and bear the consequences and carry with us. But we never learn to give it to God. That example is that a person, a person was carrying a heavy load on his head eh? and he had a chance to enter into a train. And in the train also he is carrying the load in his head. Eh? So we are in the train. Eh? The train is moving towards destination, God. God is holding us. But we carry our load on our head. We can put it at his feet. It will carry him as also my load. But we forget that. We think that I is become more important than thou, the Lord. So here is this inspiration that it is done. Know that you are worshipping the Lord. And if you can work with this attitude, work will never bind you. On the contrary, it will improve you in every aspect. Physically, it will make you happy. Mentally, you will be joyful, cheerful. Intellectually, you know that you have done for God. And spiritual benefit is a natural thing. So, in one stroke, with this attitude, doing karma in this perfectly in this attitude, it will lead us to total liberation. So that is the concept what Sami Brahmananda presented before us. Uh, doing our own duties and giving it to God, that is the best suggestion. I will read a few lines, another place. If you can uh, really do this, this responsibility for your spiritual well-being rests in Him. But this resignation should be inspired by the right spirit of complete faith. For five or six years after passing away of our master, we led a wandering life. Then one day, Swamiji called me aside and said, There is nothing in this wandering life. Work for the sake of the Lord. And we worked hard in those days. But it did us no harm. Rather, it did us good. We, we, we complain when you join in the monastery, no. And sometimes you workload too much, then we complain always. It is too much work, too much work, too much work. But Brahmananda Maharaj used to say, what work? Where is your work? I give you one example, Swami Shraddhananda. Swami Shraddhananda Maharaj who was in Sacramento, you, many of you know. So, he told one story. He was the private secretary of Swami Birojananda Maharaj. And you know, in the worship, like Christmas time, there are many letters devotees write to the President Swami and you have, Maharaj sends blessings. So it is to be handwritten. Nowadays, we have computer in one stroke, you can send all email and goes in one stroke. <laughs> but it is every letter comes and he will have to respond by hand and Swami will sign it. So one day he was asking, in the puja time, yeah, what is going on, how many letters have come? And Swami Swadhananda Ji said, Oh, I, I don't find any time. How can I do it? So many letters are coming. I, piles and piles are accumulating. I am doing almost day and night working for them. Then Swami Birojananda said, Is it so? How much work is that? Is it enough? Is it not enough that you have more time? That means your mind is not concentrated. If you do concentrated work and do it for God, you will find that. That's why Maharaj says, keep three-fourths of your mind in God. And the rest of the time you'll do little bit with the work, with that mind, purified mind, then there will be no work at all. That's why we find that we have seen some spiritual, very highly spiritual Swamis. You go to them, you see that they are as if they have nothing to do. As soon as you go, they are talking to you, chit-chatting with you. You call him and you get, get the phone response immediately. But in between, they are doing so much of work. Because they have trained themselves 
to focus their mind and doing for God and God alone. That is the secret of success. In, and also that is physically rewarding, mentally rewarding, emotionally rewarding, intellectually rewarding and spiritually benefiting so that we feel that the life is blessed. Thank you all. Can you give any question answers? If you have any questions, uh, <laughs> that's okay. I am also not, I cannot say that I, I have cleared your questions. <laughs> it is a uh, the questions are always there inside, but you know, we all know the response. We got the result. <laughs> when I was talking to the, the story of a burden on the train, uh -huh. where did you get that story from? Oh, it, it is a common story. It may came to my mind. <laughs> I thought that, you know, normally it happens, no? A person, we are carrying a heavy load, uh, enters into the train. And and even the train is moving, he, he can just put a button in the train itself and he will be easy to stand and relax. And the load will also be carried by the train. So this is the Ramakrishna train, no? <laughs> or Christ train, whatever you name, I matters little. It is a train is moving and we have taken shelter, means yes, I have entered into the train. So train is carrying me, but most of us look at our life. We are carrying a heavy burden inside. I have to do this. I want to sell do. When I, 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 I may not be able to do. I am at a loss. Just surrender. Give that load into the train. He is enough powerful to take my load and hundreds and thousands and millions and everyone's load. <laughs> That's the, that mosquito story. The mosquito was sitting on the horn of a bull. And after sitting for a long time, the mosquito said, Mr. Bull, I'm sorry I troubled you for a long time. <laughs> then Mr. Bull said, you, you alone, you come with your whole family and live there forever. God has so much power to take, but we do not know how to surrender, how to do our work. For him I did. It is your responsibility. What is my responsibility? As you are saying another story, that one, I, uh, that one uh, Swami from our education institution came to our president, Swami Shankarananda Maharaj. And he was talking about uh, this, pro what will happen, this is very critical time going on, uh, political turmoil and something going on, communism, this, that, and the institution is being vandalized and this and that. Then he came in with a real two, three nights. He was very upset and he came to the president and told Swami, what will happen to this order if it goes on like this? And he said, <coughs> very gravely, pausing some time <coughs> from his own natural tone, he said, whose sangha, whose order is this? Whose institution is this? It is your institution. Then you will be troubled. He didn't say so many words. He only said three words. Whose institution, whose order is this? Is my order? This problem is my problem? Yeah, <laughs> I am a servant. <laughs> a boss is he. <laughs> His job. So I am serving him. This is spiritual attitude. And just to surrender. And then... People, people can do tremendous work. We can do tremendous work. If we think, I don't carry the load on our head. Today's work, I can, at the end, if I can surrender to God, and I have done your work as best as I can, oh Lord, give me more strength to do, then I can sleep well. But we cannot sleep well. Why? I did whole day work, and whole night I am in anxiety. What will happen? A deadline coming. A deadline will be lost because you are so much full of anxiety. The night time you, are, you didn't have a good sleep, so you cannot produce good uh, work next morning. But simple thing to give it to God 
is so difficult, and that's the practice. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah? Oh. How, how do you let... I, I, I know you haven't said it, but how do you let go of the attachment to the reward of the work, which is something you haven't said in this lecture? Oh, reward will, reward will come to you. And when it comes, you mentally transfer, Oh, oh Lord, they are telling good to me. They are praising me. It is you. Transfer. That's also transfer. You know, it is in bank. Nowadays, bank robbery starts. Is the, no, of course, these days are changed. Previously, robber, it, robbers used to come to the home where you have kept money, where is the gold, no? Now all have been transferred to bank. Whether your gold is there, you keep in the vault, and your money is in an account, no? So no one comes to steal your home. So no one will bother us if they, they don't, there is no ego. And if it's transferred, good is good, you're good. Thank God. Blame is blame. Oh, it's your God. What? It is your blame. Because you didn't make me a fit instrument. What can I do? I told you. I told you I'm not fit candidate, eh? I may do mistake, please help me. Eh? But you didn't do it. That means we can transfer everything and keep ourselves free. It's a bad, but it's a lifelong practice, no? Mm. We'll have to do it. Eh? We cannot expect in one day. Okay. Uh, one person does not believe in spirituality, but they believe in joy. Don't use the word spirituality, they want peace, they want joy, they want happiness. And what type of happiness? Some type of happiness which will be all the time with us. That principle they like. And then, then they, when they create that trouble, you can talk to them. You want what? Not spirituality, but you want peace. Why not make peaceful? <laughs> you want joy. Why not make this, this environment joyful? Uh, but you, we cannot change anybody. But they, uh, it, this, this language can be changed to understand the spirit. talking earlier about keeping 75% of our mind in God and 25% in the world. So the 25% that we're in the world and we're doing our work, we try to dedicate what we do to God as an act of karma yoga um, and to be selfless. But also we work with other people. And so sometimes I find that it's difficult to discern if it's my ego getting in the way or if, I, if it's my um, desire for justice. So if somebody else is trying to, let's say, take credit for the work that I'm doing, I should be giving it only to God, but it doesn't feel right for me to allow another person to take credit for the work. So it's a, it's a tricky area. No, that's true, very true. But, uh, but we are to, there should be very realistic in the real world. You will have to be intelligent that that does not happen. And internally we know it is not for me, but to stop this nuisance, I must have to take care of it. That's a realistic life. It does not uh, make us non-spiritual. It does not uh, tell me that I should have to follow his uh, path of doing injustice. But I shall have to be strong, so that they don't take advantage of it. At the same time, I know, even with that effort, we'll say, Oh Lord, give me strength. It is your work. So, its glory should go to you. And it should be genuine. It should be genuine. Truth is truth. Mm -hmm. So, we should have to take practical measures also. Thank you so much. So, we end here.
ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಸೊ ಐ ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಗ್ರೀಟ್ ಯು ಆ